maybe dingoes ate y'all. Okay, so what we're doing here is a flashlight with sparkers. <laughs> so, uh, all right, hit it. That's Crazy pretty... Canadians. <laughs> this is, uh, you can you can literally use your sparker as a flashlight. It's pitch black out here, and they're uh, walking down a trail. You can see perfectly all the way down. Very, very bright. From the thicker part of your uh, downed uh, little spruce tree, you need uh, two elbow to fingertip length uh, sections. Now what you do with your handle is uh, they won't be perfectly straight, so what you want to do is roll them until you find um, there's a little bit of a bow there uh, and have them at the widest spot so that the bow is facing inside, if that makes sense. Otherwise your handle will roll. Now I've used uh, the knife to split down um, about three inches or so. I'm going to do that on the other side as well. Now I've uh, pounded the, the blade in and uh, there's a there's a bolt in the end of this. You can use a uh, penny that you've peened, it in, peened into a round thing or a nail or whatever. Then there's a little notch, a little V-notch carved here. Next thing to do is to make uh, two crossbars that will cross from all the way across there, roughly the same diameter. I'm at the stage where I have my braces, my two braces, and uh, I'm going to flatten off. I'm going to do the same thing with these. I'm going to find which direction they want to roll. I'm going to put them the other way around so that they splay away from each other. So rather than having them come together, they're going to go the opposite direction. So I'm looking at something like that looks good to me. I'm going to just to remind me of which way these are going. Two marks here. Okay, now this is going to be flattened off on here. I'm going to make two, two points to contact. There's one. Second one. On here. It's quite important that you get these contact points. You don't want to see any, when you put them together, you need to go a bit more. I want that display to about here. So this, this takes a little bit of time and to get this bit right. On this side. Okay. And you want to create this. You want you, the ideal situation is to have that contact all the way through. You don't want to hold this up and see see uh, sky through it when you look through it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use two constrictor knots. Everyone remembers the constrictor knot. We're going to bind that together at that point. And then there's two ways to do this. We can either create a flat point here where this butts up onto the frame, and a flat point here and a flat point here. And then we use nails to then hold it into place. One, two, three. That's my preferred method. I, I like to keep this frame simple, but uh, we've had people come on the course over the years and Showing their own variations on the frame, and they're all they're all valid. They're all good. You know, the, um, you can take you can take this frame and really modify it to your heart's content. But uh, I always end up coming back to the simplest method. Why overcomplicate something? Um, there's a, a V method, um, which is rather than just making a flat spot to butt against here, you. Uh, 
chamfer this on both edges, you know, on a, on a 90 degree, like that. And then you're gonna make a, a V here on a 90 degree. You do the same on this side. And uh, what that does, it's actually a quite a neat um, evolution, is it'll stop the handle from wanting to twist if it's done right. And you've got to be really precise with it because if it's done wrong, it'll do the opposite. It'll, if it doesn't sit in there nicely, you're going to have a frame that's going to rock around. But uh, it, it also stops this from slipping off. But uh, I, I like the nails. I like the flat spot. It's simple. Uh, but I'm going to leave it up to you to decide which way you want to do this. It's your frame. Um, One of the sticky little advantages I found to be. That's my idea, by the way. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm the inventor of the V. Is uh, uh, that if you're if you want lots of tension on your blade and you're cutting smaller stuff, you can slide this down here and retighten your frame. And if you're cutting big logs, you simply loosen your frame and you slide it up here because you might as well make the V the whole length of your upright. It's almost safe. Then you can easily adjust your uh, your um, <coughs> but the, the placement of this um, this this cross brace is. The ideal situation is to have a hand span and keep this keep this bottom brace parallel. That enables you to cut through that hug sized tree. So there's my uh, completed saw frame. Again, just a couple little nails there and there, bolts there and on the other side. Makes me think it might be smart to add nails and a couple bolts to whatever kit you're putting together. Now, um, to tension this, we have to put tension up here, and you want a non-static kind of, or a uh, non-stretching kind of line for up there. And they found some Baylor's twine uh, that should work. And the amount that you need depends on the strength of the line. This isn't very strong line, so we have um, 12 arm spans. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here with a. Um, clove hitch or something like that and then just wrap around and around and around. We have uh, Grizzly Dave here, he's going to show how to do the last part here. So we went over and then under and then through and then through again and he's giving it a good yank and now around and around and around and around he's wrapping it out now around the pole again And the idea is that there will be a tremendous amount of tension on here and you just don't want it to come loose and hit you in the nutsack. I'm just doing a cold pitch. Cold pitch, <coughs> yeah, okay. And then we'll melt the end once it's done, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is a little piece that's carved to a point, it's just some lath. To tension this you just go through the center and you want to angle it off just a little bit and then just start wrapping and it'll get more and more tense. The reason I'm doing this and having somebody film it is I built the saw and if it blows up it should kill me and not somebody else. <laughs> Let's see how tight that is. A little bit more, I think. And then at the end, you just angle it down. Let's see how we did here. Oh yeah, and now the thing is, um, this is gonna dry out and shrink overnight, and then I'll have to put more tension on it in the morning. Um, say that, <laughs> my cameraman is signaling me. He wants it down a little bit so so that it doesn't accidentally like flip me and knock my head off. So that's a finished bow saw. Finished, not finish. And uh, 
I'll test it out a little later, see how it works.